And today, man, we're going to do a gorgeous scene. If you guys remember that four panel piece scene that we did, didn't do a lot of them on camera, only really did the last of it on camera, so I figured we'd just do a gigantic scene for Labor Day today, right? Happy Labor Day to everyone. Now, you can see what we've done. We've covered the canvas. First, we prepped the top with our acrylic white gesso. Where's my thing at? Well, I guess I threw my little one away, so it looks a lot like that if you buy the big jar, right? The acrylic white gesso have to cover that because you never know the quality of your canvas and it could suck up that liquid white too quickly right and that's going to cause us issues further on down the road so if we prep it to begin with then you don't have those issues we mix up a little bit of liquid white just grab a little bit into a little jar for my my highlights later right clean it off bam 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 wipe that guy dry let's see you get it everywhere getting it everywhere so let me say right off the bat thank you for watching firstly secondly if this is your first time watching or second time watching or 100th time watching comment and let me know what uh you know where are you from what time are you watching and uh, what's your favorite sandwich that's what we like to ask all the time now you can see we've taken the liquid white and we've crisscrossed back and forth and it's just me up here by the way there's no one else to reply to your comments so leave a comment and i will get back to it as soon as i can towards the end of the video right Let's see, now we got it nice and prepped. Let's clean this brush off. And it shouldn't take too long to paint this big scene because I've already done it once, right? Well, four times, <laughs> just in different canvases to make one giant painting. So if we can remember what we did on those four paintings, then we should have a really fun day today. Put our liquid white away. Now let's get out our liquid clear. Looks a lot like that. Bob Ross liquid clear. We're gonna cover all the black area with the clear. Now you really want to make sure your brush is dry or switch to a dry brush that we haven't used yet. You never like having too much paint thinner residue on your brush when you're using liquid clear. It is a no-no. You don't want to have that. Watch, drop a little, couple little streaks up here just so we don't have too much in one area. All right, come down here. I'm going to have to like squat down and paint this sucker today. Let's see. Just dabbing it in, getting it close to the white, but I don't want to touch the white because any white that gets on here is going to transfer down to our darker area. And we want to keep it nice and dark down there. So just dab it on back and forth. Doesn't really matter. Just as long as we have a little bit of a wet surface in there to play with. You can see I didn't touch this white area over here because it's eventually going to get covered somewhere, somehow, right? Get a little bit more onto our brush. And a lot of times we do this prior to turning the cameras on and a lot of times people ask us to show how we prep the canvas with the clean or the white or this or that so showing you right now get the best of both worlds right and as you you know if you're watching this after the, the live ends and you're watching the replay you can always zoom through and get past this section right all we're trying to do is get it nice and wet all over just an even amount all over the canvas so while I'm doing this you guys go check out my Amazon wish list. I have all sorts of stuff. You guys can support me there. You can go to the Etsy store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Follow me on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. Go over to TikTok and Instagram. And follow me there too. And by the time you get done doing all that, we'll be ready to paint this gigantic scene today. I promise. Okay, I'm going to get down here. Bam, 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 bam. Just cover it all. Make sure we got a nice, even coat of this clear. You don't want to have too much, so you really got to... Work it in. Work it in. That's where you get it. That's why my wrist hurts. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing this is why I'm having wrist pain. There we go. I cover too many canvases with the clear. That's why. All right, let's wash this brush off so it can start to dry and we'll use it later. We will use it later. All right. I always have a paper towel down here. You guys might actually even be able to see it this time. Normally we paint from like here up and you can't see anything below, but today it is what it is. Let's get our paper towel. Now you need one or two pieces of paper towel just to wipe off all the rest of that clear that we don't want to use. All right, we always put it on. We try to put it on as thin as we can, but it's always too much. So I take a paper towel, stay away from the white area, just get the black, just wipe it off. Look, a little bit comes off each time. All right, and that's the excess that we don't want to have on the canvas is what's coming off. All right, wipe. Look, we can just, let's just squat down and paint on our knees today, Josh. Just like that. All right, 
wiping it off. You get a couple little bits of paper towel in there, but it's all right. They'll end up blending in with some trees or some rocks or something. Bam. Again, not a whole lot came off because we didn't put a whole lot on, but you don't want to have all of it on there for sure. That is for sure. Let's get a little bit of our thinner just into the old cup. So we have some new thinner we can work with, and there we go. All right, let's check the screen, make sure we're looking good. Need to come down on YouTube a little bit. There we go. Perfection. All right. Facebook, you guys are looking good. Huh. Looks like it's a little hazy. There we go. Perfection. Make it better with the light? Nah, it probably makes it worse. All right, well, guys, remember to leave your comments and uh, share. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button and make sure you um, leave a comment. It really helps towards sending it out to more and more and more and more and more people if we leave comments. So, especially when you're watching after the show ends, the live show ends and you're watching it afterwards, leave a comment and we'll see what's happening. All right, we're going to get our big old monster two-inch house painting brush from Bob Ross. And we have all these colors, sap green, thalo green, bright red, cadmium yellow, which is like a super bright yellow, uh, yellow ochre, which is a very darkish yellow, uh, <laughs> dark sienna, which is the lighter color browns, van dyke brown, which is the darker color browns, thalo blue, which is the lighter of the blues, alizarin crimson, midnight black, and titanium white. You don't have to have the exact color of any of these. You really don't. You don't have to have If you have blue, use blue. If you have... Red, use red, or crimson this, use that, or this, that, or whatever, then do it. Just make it happen. Make it happen. All right. Now, when I do a nice sunset sky, especially if I'm going to have a sun, like right here in the middle, we need to kind of decide what the colors were going to look like if we wanted to do it that way. So, let's get a little bit of our yellow. I'm going to pull our yellow out. Maybe the smallest little bit of red, so it's just not pure yellow. And maybe we'll come up down here. Look at that color. Just gorgeous. Gorgeous little things, right? But I'm not going to do the same color everywhere. That's very boring to me. So let's come in and grab another color and mix it with those guys. All three of them colors. Boom, just like that. So there's differences all on the brush. Look at all those different colors. Now, when we come up here, it's going to start to lay those differences. Look at that. And a lot of times, if you really want your paint to last and not really fade out too much, you really have to you know, use a fair amount and get it on there spark of red in there is going to look really neat. I, I like having variations of color. It doesn't all have to be the same all the time. right? And by grabbing them randomly from different parts, you're going to load the brush differently. And maybe we'll come up here. right? Just like that. Now switch to the crimson and really bring in some darkness into our sky. Right? Starting in from up here. And as we go, this stuff will mix in and it will start to kind of blend around and change with all those beautiful orange colors. Fantastic. Remember, we have to leave little differences, so don't overdo all of it. A little crimson, a little black, and just a touch of brown. Look at that. All right, we're gonna come up in here. Ooh, look at that color. It's like a dusky, kind of lavendery, purpley color, and you can mix and blend Depending on how you want your sky to look, maybe I want it kind of redder down here or something. A little dusky brown sky. Look at that. Let's see, the painting is trying to escape on us. It's trying to escape out of the easel. There we go. Now we get all these gorgeous colors, and our trick is not to over blend them all into the same color, right? That's not what you want. A little bit down there, just so it's different. Okay, maybe a little bit on the side over there. And you can paint over your rock and you can come back and change it and cover it and do all that stuff. And then we're gonna go back in and add clouds. Look, you can tell by this canvas it's got a beam right in the center. We're gonna have to fix that. With our blending, right? Look at all those gorgeous colors from red to yellow to orange to brown, all on the same brush, all fantastic. And then they're all gonna blend together into this gorgeous array of a sunset sky. You can see I've left that little pile of this, just a clear, well, not even clear, just white. We haven't even touched it with the paint yet. I'm going to try not to mess that part up. That's where our sun is going to go, right there, I think. 
perfect spot for a sun if you ask me. Okay, we've taken our brush, we've dried it off. You can still see there's a little amount of, of the liquid clear or the paint thinner in the brush, but not a whole lot. Now I really want to start in one of my lighter areas so we don't pick up too much dark color right away. And we'll start to mix and blend, crisscrossing back and forth, dragging color around, making it soft where those colors meet. And all of a sudden you start to have these little cool little differences and changes in the color of the sky. If you overdo it and blend them all together, then you're just going to have one kind of sandy brownish colored sky, which isn't what I want for this painting, but it could be what you want for your painting. And that's all that matters is what do you want yours to look like? And then that's how you paint it. Right? Maybe I want more of my crimson color to come in from over here. Just drag it down and then blend it out. Right, not overdoing it. Now that I have the crimson on the brush, I don't want to come too far into my brighter areas of my sky because that's going to dilute those bright colors, right? Especially down here where we're coming really into that dark color that's way up in the top corner. Really want to just start from the edge, pull it in, and let your brush kind of pull away so you're not pulling all of it in at the same time. Get that little hair out of there. Get out of there. Don't want to pull it all in all the way to the edge and then stop. You'll have a really hard line. That's why we don't start in the middle and go outwards. Start from the edge. Cover our sides. Gotta be covered. It just helps whoever buys it. They don't have to frame it. If you're lucky enough to sell them, right? They don't have to frame it. They don't have to do anything special except hang it on the wall because it's nice and finished on the edges. That's a really cool little sunset sky right there. But for some reason, it's just not as dark as Paint With Josh likes. So let's go back in, get a little bit more black, maybe a touch of blue, a little bit of crimson. All in there, nice dark color, right? And maybe from the top up here, we'll just bring down a little bit and we'll add to this darkness up here. Just adding to the dark. All right, now this has blue in it, so don't get too close to our yellow. That's not what we want. All right, now I'm gonna take whatever colors on this brush and get rid of it because I don't want to have too much go too far around our whole scene. And then we'll be just about done blending our sky out. It'll look really cool. And then we can go add clouds. That's the fun part, adding all the clouds. Okay, again, I'm going to start where it's lightest. Maybe come into my lighter area first and then go out where it's, you know, deep into the dark. That way I'm not transferring too much dark back into that light area. And then just very lightly, you know, with different amount of pressure, starting to drag those colors. The more we blend, the more those little striations from the brush bristles are gonna go away. You can turn it into this real soft sky. You can leave dark areas. You can do whatever you wanna do because it is your painting, imagine that. And your painting doesn't have to look like my painting at all. Don't even worry about it. If, it's, if you're like, oh, it's just not even looking like it at all. That's, that's the best part about art. It doesn't have to look like my painting. It's not supposed to look like my painting, right? I'm giving you an idea and a little bit of technique on how to make a sunset. And then you go, you're going to have different colors. You're going to have different things. You're going to push a little bit harder than I did in certain areas or push a little bit less and have little differences in your sky. And it's going to be fantastic. So don't worry. That's the biggest thing I see in the, in the groups is people go, oh, I'm worried about this, so I, I'm just not even going to start painting yet. And you're like, no, 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 don't worry. That's the fun part, right? Get it out, get it done, get it on a canvas, and then learn. What, did, what can I do better next time? How can I do this, or how can I do that a little bit better? Okay, like I'm going to save this dark color that we've been messing with up here on the brush. I'm not going to wash it off because I want to use it as my clouds maybe down around here, right? But we're not going to do them just yet. Let's throw that sun in. That sun, I'm going to get a little bit of white right on the end of a filbert brush, go straight into that area right there where we had left the spot, and then just rotate the brush while not moving it from the center. Just spinning it in a little circle, and you get your cool little sun. And then you can go back, you can spin the other way and extend it. And it takes a little bit of practice to get it perfect, right? Everything takes practice to get perfect. Damn, just like that. Very cool. And just very lightly, I like to get the little brush lines out of it. And then you got a very cool little sun back there. 
just with a brush in about 20 seconds. You can paint a sun. You can paint an entire galactic sun in about 20 seconds with a brush and a little bit of white, right? Things a billion degrees back there. Okay. Now let's decide what we want to start doing for our clouds. And let's get out our round brushes, right? The, uh, the Bob Ross round and half round brushes. They make really cool little clouds I found as I was uh, experimenting recently that it's a really neat little shape. So we're gonna start to piece our sky together with these clouds and see what they look like and then kind of go from there, right? So let's get, let's do the small one because the big one is, it's a very big brush. Even for me, I, it's only in the foreground. I really like using that big one. So we get a little bit of white. We're gonna dab it onto the palette like that, right? Tapping it in. So we get a little bit just on the end, not too thick, of course. It doesn't have to be so crazy. And then maybe we decide there's like a little bit of cloud coming in around the edge of the sun. Look, it's just so lightly even there. And with this brush, you can play back and forth with distance, right? If you want it really far away, leave it nice and soft and light. And if you want it really close, add a little bit of the shadow color. Why don't we come in with a little bit of that kind of purpley shadowy mix underneath that we've had just on our brush like that. Grab a, a little one inch brush and just very lightly mix those guys together. All right, not touching the top though. I want to leave the top these nice little sparkly, light, fluffy things. And look, all of a sudden, you get this gorgeous little cloud. All right? Now you can build off of him. Let's say maybe he had like a little bit of a, a little bit of a buddy he lived out here. It started to come up and around the cloud. All these cool little things start happening, right? And now we have to change where our shadow belongs. It doesn't belong on the bottom down here. It belongs around the back of the cloud. So why don't we take a little bit of that shadowy area, tap it in with our, our little two inch brush. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Don't want to cover up all of the stuff, all of the beautiful color that we laid down back there. All right, just like that. Just mixing up maybe the bottom half of the white into the bit of darkness. You got this really cool little tunnel of clouds starting to form just like that. All right, get a little bit more white on the same brush and maybe there was another little section that got lit up into that darkness, just a little bit. All right, maybe the littlest bit of shadow back behind him. Just kind of tapping it in, just because there's already color on this brush. And again, mixing up just the half of the white and most of that dark. Now you get cool little bits, right? Little depth. A little bit of depth in the cloud. All sorts of ways we can make clouds up. All right, we don't have to just use our big round brush. You're like, man, Josh, I don't have a big round brush. Can you show me another way to make a cloud? Why don't we do a little fan brush action over here? We could do a fan brush, right? You got everybody got a fan brush. Maybe down here, I don't know, just a little bit of a, just a streak. A little streak of white, way off down the bottom, right? So simple, take our clean dry brush. The more and more you go over it, the softer and softer it'll become. You can always mix it up. If it's a little bit too rough or you put down a little bit too much paint, right? Bam, far off little softy floating way off in the distance. All right, let's take, let's, I love this brush. Why don't we just keep going with this brush? It's a fantastic brush for the kind of clouds that I want to make, right? I'm dabbing it in. Look at the amount of, of texture that's left behind, right? It's a fair amount of paint onto the brush. And you know, it's always fun when we do cool stuff. So why don't we go, I don't know, over here, and just start to tap them in. Get these far off little, little guys that live back there. Right? All of a sudden being lit up by the cloud. We have that darkness. We come in here. And as we get further and further and further away from the sun, we can get darker and darker and darker with our shadow. So you can add a little bit of crimson or a little bit of black or a little bit of a brownish color, depending on where you are in your sky, and it'll end up looking really neat. Right? Almost forgot. We gotta flatten these guys down just a touch. Just by pulling over from the edge. Three hairs and some air, just a little bit. All right, take these guys, go up, come across to the side. And then you go back, you get more paint. And you go, uh, maybe it would be cool if that one had a little bit more there, or a little bit brighter over here, or maybe a little piece connected in between. And you're like, all right, right on, right on. Start to grab that guy, mix him up. All of a sudden becomes very soft and part, part of the sky. Like it's just kind of floating, kind of growing from the sky even. Here you go, pow, straight out, a little bit of cloud. All right, and if it's ever too thick or it doesn't look just right, go back in there and tap them again, tap all of them, make them a little bit softer. 
right? Just adds a little bit more detail, back in very softly, just mixing up certain pieces. Two inch brush is easier to do it with. Bam, bam, bam. Very soft little things that live very far away. And it's something like I said, you, de you decide what, you know, what's gonna live off in the distance? What's gonna live closer? Where does everything go? This guy right here. Like the more and more paint that we add in there, the more little details we're gonna get. Cool little pieces that live up there. Right, and I don't wanna take and cover all those details because they make these really neat little effects. But we do need to take and kind of mix in from maybe just below the top and just kind of mix in just slightly just so it's not so crazy, right? Now it looks like this whole thing is all one giant piece of cloud. And if you don't want it to be so much the same where it's like bump, 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 just change it. Change it. Change it until you like how it looks. And that's the only, the only opinion that matters is how you like it, right? If you don't like it, you're gonna sit there and look at it and go, man, I wish I would've did this different, or I wish I would've done that. So play with it until you like it. That's what I like to say, a little bit of brown that dark, uh, the, yeah, the dark sienna brown, which is the lighter color of the browns, just in there on the brush, and then we're gonna come in and make it real soft. Real soft, with a clean, dry brush. You want your, your blending brush to be dry. You don't wanna have paint, look at this, look at the difference here. You don't wanna have paint on your, your brush where you're putting the color on, you wanna have it be very dry when you go to blend it, otherwise that color is gonna keep growing and growing and growing and growing which is the color brush. This one, I forgot which one we were using. Ah, there it is, I can feel it. I can feel the difference, a little bit more brown in there. Look how we just came down over that piece. Now all of a sudden we've shaped this negative space to thinking maybe even that's a cloud, right? Just by doing nothing. We did nothing. Like, what did you do, Josh? I did nothing. I didn't do a thing. Maybe I had just a couple little bits. And with this brush, I like to spin it and rotate it as we push, that way it gives Little differences, right? Josh always talks about differences in color and little differences in everything. Differences in our trees and clouds and shapes and this and that and all the rest. Right? That's very cool. All right, why don't we take one more little piece since we just this brush is just working out so fantastically. We might as well just rock another one. You know, well, what do you guys think? Anything? Yeah, no, definitely. Definitely. Why don't we make it connected to this guy right here? So he starts coming up. All of a sudden he's off the screen. Very cool, very neat little thing, right? Almost like they're all one big thing that's just kind of whizzing around the sky, very cool. And again, these look like little tree branches. When we use our darker color, that's what the tree branches look like to me. And I figured, I saw some clouds the other day, and I was like, how does Mother Nature get those clouds to, to look like that? What brush does she use, right? <laughs> and uh, I, I think I finally found the brush, so thank you. Thank you, Mother Nature and Bob Ross for providing the brush shape and the idea I needed to do this painting. And this guy comes in over here. Very cool, right? And you, your sky is gonna look totally different than mine. And that's okay. That's how it's supposed to be. I don't, if everybody painted the same thing, can you imagine how horrible and boring art would be if it was all just the same? Just the same amount the same colors, you're like, why? There's, let's just have one artist in the world. If everything's gonna be the same, let's just have one person do it, right? No, it's fun because it's different. It's always gonna be different, and that's the best part. A Little bit more of that brown, maybe a little bit of yellow mixed in with that brown over here. They make the most gorgeous rock colors, but maybe we could use it as a far away, a little bit of shadow maybe coming in. Ooh, very lightly though, that's a lot of color, right? You gotta decide what yours is gonna feel like. If you put way too much on, just do a little bit, and then just kind of blend it back. Blending it away, different heights, different levels, different distances this way, right? It's not all about just slap, 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 having everything all on the thing and be done. That's no fun. Right? Maybe a little bit more of the kind of brownish color down in here just to accentuate that shadow, just a little bit. Very lightly, our sky can grow, it can do different things. And now all of a sudden, there's two bits of darkness that look like they would look just fantastic if there was just a little pop of white in there. Just like that, a super, super cloud-filled sky. Very simply, very easily. Now we can just mix over the, that dark color that was already underneath, and all of a sudden we've got these gigantic floaters that just look better than you've ever seen in your life. Let me tell you. Give me a little bit more lightness down in here. 
who knows, maybe it connects somewhere else, or it's another piece. It's another layer of depth for Josh's paintings, right? And this is why people are like, oh, your paintings look too hard for me to do. I'm like, what is hard? I'm, sh I'm showing you exactly what we're doing. Nothing difficult about it. If you do what I do, you will get a similar result. Let's grab a little bit of that white, just a little bit, maybe one inch of a drag, so there's not a whole lot of paint on the brush, right? And then maybe there's, you know, Josh, it's got to be a little contrail way off, just flying through our painting. Because every time I look up at the sky, can't, it doesn't matter if I'm in the woods, doesn't matter if I'm in the middle of a city, there is a contrail in the sky. So bam, that's what sets me apart. And my UFOs, but mainly that. Should we go one more little layer of cloud up there? Should we just leave it? No, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. All right, now with that brown color that we had on the brush that we don't now know which, I think it's this one. All right, why don't we take, let's make a little bit of a bottom of a cloud, just by kind of tapping it in and pulling it straight sideways. We'll add the top in a second, or it might end up being the bottom of that cloud or whatever. All right, and then over here with that same brown, just kind of pull down with a little bit of pressure. Depends on what yours looks like, but leave some of that yellow around it, right? So it looks like a far off little desert rainstorm. Something that's going to feed our waterfall as we come closer to us, right? Oh, that's fantastic. I love it. I love it. Okay, a little bit more of that white so we can go over the top. Stay in between. Don't let those, these two little white areas touch, right? Maybe this guy's just over like that. Very cool. Now we can't tell which one it's coming from. Pull it up. Hold to the side. Very soft. Very neat. Far off little rainstorm. Ooh, even a little bit of that darker color back in there, but not too much, right? You don't want to have, where did that dark color come from? There we go. Want to have those differences, the darkness, the light, the brown, the yellow, the pink. Don't want to cover everything, and it doesn't have to go all the way to the ground. I've lived in the desert for 30, 32 years. You only ever see it rain in one section about that big. No matter where you look, you're like, yep, no, it's raining over there. Fantastic. And it rains for about five seconds, and, uh, and then it goes away. It just trails off like it was never even there. And all the plants are like, ah, thank you for that little, that little burst. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. And it lowers the temperature by 10 degrees for just a few minutes, but it's the most fantastic few minutes you've ever seen. Like if you live here and it gets so hot, like today it's already 100 something. <clears throat> 101, 102, 103, it's climbing. Very soft. Same thing, back and forth. We do the same things over and over and over. So no matter how many layers there are, it can't be difficult because we're doing the same thing over and over. Just a little bit of white over there. Like he just got a little bit of a friend who wanted to get lit up just at the bottom. Swipe that guy up, swipe him to the side. All of a sudden, gigantic. Ooh, I love it. I'm gonna have to adjust my own camera down so we can see the rest of the painting. If you guys wonder why I'm looking over to the side, it's because I have a TV over here that shows me your view, right? From my view, it's very blinding. All this black is very white to me because of the glare of my lights, right? So when I look over at the TV, I get to see what you guys are seeing. So it's like a trifecta view of looking. So if I'm ever looking like this and you guys are like, why doesn't he look straight at us? I don't understand. It's because there's nothing to look at over here besides the reference painting that's behind us. But uh, yeah, I have to see what you guys can see because sometimes when you're too close to the project, you just, you, you can't tell. You gotta take a step back. And by coming back here by you guys and seeing what it looks like, then I know I'm going in the right direction, right? Very cool. Very cool little sky. Okay, let's wash some of these brushes off. We're gonna need, I mean, I don't have many more than that, right? So we gotta clean them off. Gotta clean them off. And while we're cleaning off the brushes, you can go to paintwithjosh.com. If you like what you're seeing right here, make sure you're tapping on Facebook or you like it on YouTube. Hit that little thumbs up and leave a comment, especially if you go watch it again. If you want to paint this scene and you come back and you watch it again, leave a little comment because it just helps me reach more people, right? I can't reach them all by myself. For some reason, YouTube just won't show me to the entire world. So I need your help getting there. It's kind of demoralizing when you look at other channels that you know, either don't work as hard as I do or I don't think are as good as me and they have way more subscribers than me. It's just so demoralizing. <clears throat> but we're going to keep at it. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep teaching you how to paint for free, just like Bob Ross did, and we're going to do it live, right? Bob says in his show, this is what you see. There's no editing here. What we see 
is what he did, even the accidents, right? And that's what we like to show you around here, is that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to take five months to come up with a painting tutorial to put out to your fans. You don't have to do it once a month, and you don't have to charge people when you get halfway through your video and they want to finish watching your video, but now you got to pay. That's, uh, that's not fair to me. So, I do have channel memberships where I offer my own paid-for content, right? And that's about 20 videos. They'll take you from a level zero to a painting hero, right? But I have about 260 videos. 240 of them are free. So, way more than any other painter in three years. Come on, guys. How hard do we work around here? All right, nice beautiful sky. Let's come in with our mountain color. And we don't even really have to do much or mix much. We're gonna take these three dark colors, our blue, black, and crimson. We're gonna grab some of those browns. We're gonna mix those in. We need a fair amount of paint though. This is gonna be a lot of paint on this painting. We're nice and heavy by the time it's done. There we go. Wipe off our old knife. Didn't do a very good job of wiping it off. There we go. And I don't want to use the knife in this instance. Let's take, let's take a fan brush, right? All we need to do is get the paint onto the canvas. So let's take a fan brush. We're going to start to shape out our mountain, bring it back from where it started to kind of go away. Right? Maybe drop down there. There was a bit that hung off there. Who knows? Right? Who knows? Bring it down and then we're just going to cover it with whatever paint is on the brush. Just cover the color, right? All I got to do is make it dark. That's why I said we're going to be using a lot of paint right here. It's going to come across. Maybe we had another little area that's stuck out. And the reason I like to do this is because you don't have to cover the entire thing, right? The majority, half of this black is just going to stay black and unpainted. And that's what's going to make it look fantastic. All right, we're going to, it's so hard to paint with a weird little fan brush like this. We're going to come down. And bring it back and come around. Just kind of filling in the original shape that I had put in there initially, and that way we can get to, to highlighting that. Right, but you need a little bit of the oil paint, this darkness, you need a little bit of the shadow to grip our highlights. If you just go to put highlights up there with nothing to, for them to hang on to, you're gonna have a tough time. And we want it to be easy for you. If it's not easy, you're not gonna keep doing it, and that's not fun to me. I want you to keep watching me forever. So try to do things that make it easy, that look really intricate and really crazy, but they're actually really simple, right? I'm not gonna try to do something for you that even I struggle doing, like what? That's gonna make me look. So if I'm doing it, you guys can do it. I'm telling you, it's as simple as that. There we go. It doesn't even have to be perfect, right? All these little imperfections we can cover with our highlights. Let's get in here again, just kind of Get any bit of that dark color on there, and then we can just pull it away, shape what we want the face to look like, because that's all that really matters, is just this top edge, or the outside edge in this instance. All right, just wiggling it down, dragging all that oil paint, bam, over to the side. Now we got our mountain, and we can go to highlight that guy. Very easily, too, just a couple of Somebody said the other day, they're like, oh my God, I love the color of your sky. I'm like, what do you mean color? That's like eight colors in that sky. That's a lots of colors up there. But that's what makes them so cool is that you have all these little differences in color and stuff like that. Very neat. This guy's not as soft as he needs to be. There we go. A couple more times, just make him soft and far away. Very cool. Okay, let's take our palette knife. We're going to mix up a little bit of the brown, the light brown, and the dark yellow, right? That's why we put those two next to each other right there. And mix that guy up over here. And we need a fair amount of it. Even throw in some of the dark, the darker color brown, that Van Dyke brown. Oh, look at that. And you just mix it until it becomes this kind of marbled mess, right? That's all this is a mess. All we do is paint messes. Now imagine our sun's over here. So let's come up and just, just gonna start dropping and then mushing and then swiping and pulling and this, that, and the othering, right? It's, it's very much unique to you. What do you want yours to look like, right? And swipe a little bit that way, only leaving a little amount of that brown color and the rest in darkness because your mind is gonna make up what the rest of the rock looks like back here where we can't see, right? And it's gonna be great. Let me come around the edge of this guy because the front of it is just high lit. Right? And we can bring it back with those shadows, kind of leaving that little line of paint there. 
There we go. Dragging it down, pulling it off to the side, doing different things, different ways. So a mountain is not just one direction, right? You have all these little different directions, different ways that the, the thing is going to move and grow, different ways that the, the rocks were piled on top of each other, right? It's not, it's not a, a thing where it's just a straight up thing. These rocks are, are a pile of little things laid on top of a gigantic thing. And so they're never all going to go the same direction is the point. And I see mountains that just straight down to the side, the whole mountain. You're like, where, where do you see that? Where have you ever seen that? Because I want to know. So I can go see it as well. Right? And not even covering all the dark. If we cover too much of the dark, maybe it comes up like this and just lights up a whole other little side. Just like that, right? Just by making a mess. Just make up a whole mess. There's a whole other one. You just don't want to leave too much paint in one certain area, right? If it gets really bright like that, you can always go back and add in darkness and stuff, but I think that, that looks really kind of cool. Just like so. Very neat. Very cool. You need to have a far off little bit of... Have a far, you know what we do here? Just to make it less textured. Kind of three hairs and some air, just like we've been talking about. Very lightly in the direction that you swiped it with a knife. So, you know, if you got it to go like this, then do that with your brush. If you came off just straight down, then go straight down. All these little angles are so important. And we're barely, barely touching the thing. Just so, so barely. And all it does is just make it a little softer, a little blurry, right? A little less textured. Very cool, very cool. Now, what if that sun came back and was like, bing! I'm just going to light up a little section of rock just right back in there. Very neat. Just how we can add different little things. Maybe this guy all part of that rock right there and just by smooshing it on changing it the smallest little bit then going back making it soft just like we do with our clouds right i go over them very lightly all it does help blend it help make it look more realistic to me anyway very 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 cool now let's throw off some far off we did in the other one anyway we had some with some distance back here right it wasn't just i mean we could have an open sky like this and then just have a drop off to a, just a big open sky but i like to have a few little things in the back so why don't we take a little bit of that, we can do a little bit of this same yellowish brownish color, just on our fan brush, right? Get it in there, and then maybe off in the distance there are these very far away little hills. And it's gotta be dark enough to stand out, you know, in front of whatever color you have off in the background. Just like that, maybe even lighter. There was like a little softer one even back there. Just so lightly with the paint. Gonna pull it back just to give the impression that maybe there's a little valley that lives down in here, right? And a closer one. Maybe he's just a touch darker. So he looks closer to us. See what I mean? Go back and just our rainstorm to come down and touch onto that guy. Very cool. And those guys are so far away, these little hills. We don't have to have a lot of detail in them. Right? They're just little bits of a far away hill. Lone Tree Hills, way back here, that provide a little bit of depth and distance for our painting, right? Very cool. Now, I believe in the bottom of the other one, we had a little grassy field back there, which looked really neat. That looks cool like that. All right, a little bit of that darkness over here, just to bring, oh, look what we did. That's okay. That's okay. We always say worried about the top edge. Looks like a little bit of soft sky back there, even. All right, let's get a little bit of the green onto the brush. We'll throw a little bit of yellow with it and do this far off little grassy field way back here, just by tapping it in. Right, maybe he kind of climbs up the mountains a little bit. So just to tap it in, tap it in. Just leaving little bits of greenery back there. Not dumping it on too hard in one section, of course. And it doesn't all have to be the same color. Now we got this far off little a little bit of field back in there. Again, just by tapping it, making it soft. And then, bam. A little greenery back there is all I really want. That's where it rains all the time. That's why it's green back there. All right, let's come in. We're going to grab up a little bit more of our dark colors, our four little dark colors that are right here next to each other. Van Dyke Brown, uh, Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, and Midnight Black. We're going to get those onto our brush. 
And let's see, I think I did that tree first, so let's put a little bit of a little pine tree back here, just straight down and kind of decide where he's going to live, right? He sits out here and looks over the whole scenery. He's got the best view I've ever seen. Right? Just start popping up little things with just the corner. And then the more we go down, the more you push in, right? I'm not pushing with my full force until we get down about halfway down around the tree. And now the whole amount of bristles are going to be on to the, the canvas like that. See what I mean? Where it's grown. It's grown like that. Up here, we're just using just the corner, just little bits. Don't want to have it be too crazy up here. Right? Just touching little teeny tiny things. Little things. We can take our knife, run it right through some of that paint, go straight up with a nice little tip top of our tree right there. So simply and so easily done. All right, let's get a little bit of our liquid white. Why don't we highlight this guy while we can? A little bit of our green. I want a little bit of that brown in there too. I don't want it to be too, too bright, right? It's a, it's a sunset. We're kind of back in here by the, the shade of this little tree and I'm only really going to do the left side with this greenery just by tapping up, going out, tapping back, not covering the whole tree, right? Because the whole tree is not going to be seen. This side of the shadow, your brain will make up what's going on on that side of the tree. That's where all the little critters live. They don't want to be out here in the open where you can see them. They want to be tucked away. Tucked away in the shadows. Just little dabs. All you got to do to make it look right. Very cool, just like that. All right, let's have our, our ground come out. Maybe there was a bit of a canyon wall back here. It just came down, and for some reason, that's where our water is dripping from. So we're gonna fill that with our dark area. And pull it down just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a gigantic, crazy one, because there's another closer canyon wall that sits back here. So let's get some of that brown with the dark color in it. Just the littlest bits, all we need because we're just going to pull it straight down from the top. Just a little bit, and then all we need is that little bit of brown color back there. And that signifies to our brains, hey, time to look, that's way too bright, right? That's going to be like, why is the sun right there? Let's scrape up all that yellow. It never got mixed up just right. Come back in, add in our little bits of dark and little things. And now we can see on the precipice of that rock that there's a little bit of light. So that lightest color we can take, put right on the top. And that way there's a little shining bit of light back there. There we go. Kissing the top edge. Pull the rest of it straight down. Now with our brush, we're going to take that guy, pull him straight down. Just very lightly though. All we're trying to do is get those guys to just blend in the littlest bit. All right? Maybe off. Right from there is where our waterfall is going to drip down. That looks about right. And then we'll put another tree about dead center. Okay. Now let's take a little bit of blue so we don't have to do too much work. Let's take a little bit of the straight blue onto the brush. And right where we want our waterfall to come down, let's put it dead right there. Just pull a straight line of dark blue down, right? And that way as we go over it with our white, it will turn into... Um, this gorgeous kind of blue that we don't even have to mess with. All on its own, the easy way, right? We'll do it the easy way. Take some of that white, just on one corner, flip the brush over, get it on that same corner, and that way you can't have too much, right? This side of the brush in both instances is dry. The other side's a little wet. Take here, straight down. Little bit of water, all you need. Maybe it comes from the side, pulls straight down. And that's really it, that's all you need. You don't wanna make it too bright, I mean, it starts to look so good, you want to do it more and more and more and more. But I'm telling you now, don't do it. Don't overdo it. That's the thing. That's the thing Bob taught me, right? He was like, man, that tree's gorgeous. Why doesn't he make 10,000 of those? Well, you don't overdo it. That's why. Don't want to overdo it. Let's add another little bit of darkness right in here to this little piece of rock, just so we can hide where the water is coming from, right? Now we don't know where the water is coming from. A little bit of dark back in there just to help it feed its way. Feed why that water is coming. It's obviously coming from somewhere else and it's going to drip down into our thing. It's catching the rain. All the rain is filtering down in, right? 
Okay, you can see we don't have any color down around the dark. What are we looking like, by the way? How are we looking on the camera? Oh good, you can see the whole screen. That's fantastic, perfect. Perfect, perfection, perfect. Okay, now, these two pieces of rock are going to connect in front of our waterfall, which is going to be back there. And then below that, that arced piece of rock is going to create our cave, which the waterfall will then feed into another waterfall and go down into. Always trying to think of cool stuff for you guys. I really need to come up and decide where we want the edge of our canyon wall. There we go. Darken that section up just a little bit, just so it's as dark as the bottom. There we go. And that way it won't really hurt my brain so much anymore. We got our little canyon wall back there. Very cool. Very, very cool. Our waterfall is not very straight, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. That's better. Always messing with the details. If I don't fix them right here on camera, then I'll have to do it afterwards. And then by that time, it's going to be more difficult to do. So very neat. One thing it looks like we're missing over here is like the back side of our rocks. So just by pulling off a little bit of that color back here, it'll create the illusion that the rock is a little bit bigger, you know, and more 3D. What the heck? All that crazy color back here. I don't want all that. That's not what I wanted to happen for sure. That's what happens when you don't wash the brushes. There we go. And a little bit of depth, a little bit of backing to our guy. It can't all just be highlights. You have to have, even if it's just a little change, you got to have that little change in color. So let's get some more brown, some more yellow, just kind of try to recreate that darker color. And then let's see, yeah, there we go. Just kind of pull it just slightly down, just so it looks like there's another piece of rock back there. It's not alone. It's not just this all bright thing. There's a whole nother some something happening behind him. It's just dark. It's harder to see. Harder to see way back here. All right, let's wash these brushes off before we get too crazy. Don't know how that light color got into there, but I don't like it. I don't like it when they go and change on me. It's not cool when they go and change on you. So again, where's everyone watching from? What time is it where you are? What are your Labor Day plans? What do you plan on doing later? It's always fun to ask, because then when we go back and watch this six months later and re try to redo it, it's not Labor Day anymore. You know what I mean? Let's see. Oh yeah, this is gonna connect right in over the top of that guy. Fill all the rest in. Why don't we do that now? Let's get a little bit of our darker color. Let's scrape up those shadowy bits. Let's scrape it up so we have a good thick amount of paint right here. Because when we put our fan brush on it, it always just spreads it out so far. And you're like, oh, I need to make more. And when in reality, if you just scrape it up, you could redo it again. All right, so see this guy. Yeah, see, he comes up here like this. Cuts in front of the waterfall. And maybe he comes down there. we got to connect him right here. Right, so that piece of rock, and then this all becomes that backing area, and then this guy will come down. All of this will be covered. Right, it's like a little walkway across, and then his dude will come down like that, and that's the opening to the cave. Okay, there's the cave. There's the stuff. There's our beam of rock across, just in that dark color. That's all you really need. I know it's hard to see. We're going to highlight it right here. Now, down underneath... I don't really need all of that light down here. It's going to end up being fogginess anyway. But we do need to prep as we go down, right? So let's get a little bit more of that blue onto our two inch brush. We need to have some undercolor down in our, our base down here where our water is going to be. And that way it'll pick up any amount of white paint that we put down. We'll turn into this blue mist or our blue falling waterfall, just like that. Right, and the other one, we had a little section where it kind of puddled up and um, there was another little like rocky area over here, a little puddle, a little forbidden pool. It's fantastic. So just a little bit of blue in there. And that way, whatever turns out to be 
unpainted rock or just straight darkness, we may have a little bit of mist inside. Right? Just by making it blue. There we go. Get rid of that mist of our, get rid of our waterfall. And there's the bottom side of where our, our beam is. If you couldn't see it before, that's where it is right there. All right. Now, all that will be rock. We'll have a little bit of water. We'll have some rocks over here. It'll be really cool. Okay, let's wash this brush off. We'll get going. Get going. Again, tell me where you're watching from. What time is it? What's your favorite sandwich where you are? Do they do like some crazy thing that's like only specific to your town? Or like a Philly cheesesteak, right? Or, uh, you know, whatever. Whatever your, your go-to favorite place is. Where's, what's your favorite sandwich from that spot? All right, let's get some. Okay. This one might actually end up looking a little different than the other one because I like this area over here. I might want to do something differently there. Really cool. So let's work on this rock. And then, like looking for my palette, I couldn't find the dang thing. So again, mixing up these brown colors and with the cad yellow, uh, the yellow ochre, sorry. And we're going to find a spot just right in here, might as well. Just mix them until... They're kind of all one uniformly. See how you swipe it out and get that real bright yellow? That's not what I want. I don't want a really bright yellow section. All right in here, and again, we can start to figure out what these little rocks might look like, especially as they start to turn sideways. Like, how are they going to lay? What little details are going to be in there with that thickness of the paint? Right? Our little things we might be able to get out there and walk on. How do you think you got around over there? Little things, taking our rock in different directions, leaving the bottom half a bit dark though. We're not gonna see what's happening under the bottom half. So let's take a little bit of our, our blackish mixture, a little bit of the crimson and the blue. Maybe that touch of white, just to brighten it up enough just so we could see it. I want it to be super bright, just like that. Then we got a whole nother, oh yeah. A little bit of bluey, rocky section underneath, and then you'll be able to pick where the bottom of the of the uh, canyon wall is. Right here, this guy starts coming down. All this crazy stuff will end up being another whole little section that's hidden from the light down in here. And we'll get a little bit of our yellow bouncing down around in there, but not too terribly much of it. A little bit over there. This guy's still going to be in the shade as we come down. And then poof, he'll pop up into something else. And then maybe he'll have a little bit of shade behind his rocky self over here. We'll see what it looks like, right? We can always change it. We'll see what it looks like. Just like that. Let's pop in another tree over here. The one over here was bigger though. It was a bit bigger than, uh, than the thing. And I don't want it to be so dead center, but we're gonna have to see what happens. All right, if we put him over here, maybe put him up a little bit taller. I don't want to cover up too much of my rainstorm off in the distance and just straight down it's going to live right at the tip of that rock out there just like that coming back in very lightly tapping up and the more and more we go down the more we tap and the more pressure we give and then you start to rotate back and forth bouncing out towards the edge every so often to create those little bits of kind of tree shape or branches to be thick enough to where it's going to be able to grab some color, right? When we when we try to drop our lighter color on there, you got to have it thick enough, but you don't want it to be overly thick as well. That's not going to help anybody. The side goes down back there. He's just barely hanging on. He is hanging on by a thread, this guy. You see a little bit of light back there, and then it just kind of trails off. Just kind of trails off, goes down that way. Very cool. Very cool little thing. What this guy's missing is just a little bit of light on that, the tip of his edge out there. That was tripping my brain out. Okay, that's going to be there. This can be a little bit lighter. Right, we got our cave wall back here. Just kind of scraping it down, just making it up. Man. Making sure that we're in our the right direction. We've added this little section in here, which is going to kind of try to trick my brain. So 
why don't we just take this, since this one's going to be a bit different, let's take this guy, get him up here, and then just pull him straight down. All right, right up on the edge, straight down, just like that. Try to cover up all my little uh, imperfections, right? This is when I'm like, Josh, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just want it to be there. Because that's not the focal point of the painting anyway. A little bit of shadow, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit back in there, just to help my brain. All right, now I'm going to take that very lightly, three hairs and some air, remember, pull it down. Just flattening it, making it soft, making it blurry, making it far away, dragging it down as far as you want. Just like that. Very cool. Now we got a whole other piece and come out here. Have our waterfall drip down maybe a couple times into our little forbidden area. That'll be neat. All right, now we need to connect our waterfall again to wherever it's going to land down here, and then it's going to fall off again. So as it comes down, a lot of that's going to be fogginess. We're going to catch underneath. It's going to feed over. It's going to spill out over here. We're going to have some more rocks. Or did we do that? Did we have, no, it's down too far in that, in that section. Sorry for looking back at you like, oh, concerned. I'm going to have to look at the reference photo here. Very cool. Remember, uh, keep tapping the screen. It helps YouTube and Facebook figure out that we're actually kind of cool and that they should send some more people our way. And... Uh, Show them some cooler stuff. Let's take a little bit of dark back in here, just because there was a few areas where it was a bit too bright. Now it looks so much more realistic. We have all those little shadowy dark areas and it wouldn't be so perfect. All right, if it's perfect, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it. Let's scrape up some more of that bluish kind of color, put it down in here for our things. And if it goes green with the highlights, that's fine too. Yeah, let's put it right there, okay. Let's take a little bit, that dark color, we're going to start to create the shape of what do we want our rock or a little stony area to look like when it gets over here. That kind of purpley-ish, bluish, blackish mix, right? Not a lot of it's going to be high lit until it gets over here into the sun. So, let's not go too crazy with it, that's what I'm saying. Very lightly again, every layer, it helps, I'm telling you it helps helps create that more realistic look if you're if you swipe it over just so softly so they don't grow in the direction that you did it initially right all right now we've got our rock down in here let's grab some more of that yellowish brownish color all right scrape it up and maybe up here we had a little bit of a, a little bit of rocky area Starts to fall off in the direction of all that shadow, right? It's not going to be the brightest thing you've ever seen. That's not what we want. Maybe a little bit of light over there hit. Maybe underneath, over here. Just letting it go down so you like the way that it looks. That's all you really need to worry about. And once you liked it, right? Just like making a mess, but making a mess to where you can't really tell that it's a mess, right? I need to get down, see a little bit better on my, my thing over here. Right? It's a mess, but it's a, a calculated mess. You don't just throw it up there at random. You kind of decide what you want your little things to look like. Why can't I see that? <laughs> I can't see where I'm trying to work on the screen. I'll have to back up here by you guys. Yeah, that's very cool. Very cool, except I don't want to come down too far going this way. Let's take it off. We'll go this way. Bam, just mixing it up, messing it up a bit. It's all we do, right? Come back in the areas where we pull this way just so softly. If you move the paint, then you're touching it too hard. You have to touch it so soft that it doesn't even move. And if you move any color around, you're pushing way, way, way too hard. There we go. I like that little bit of kind of light bluish shadow back there. That's very neat. Okay, now we have our little area where our little sticky guy can live. We had our one tree that was just dead center, about as tall as the sun. It's going to have to be on the other side this time. Right? The more we come down, the more I'm pushing in. So the 
trunk extends a little bit further. All right, come down, push in, just extends the trunk. Don't go too far into our little rock. We don't want to have to mess that up too bad. Now we're going to grab a script liner, right? Grab a little bit of our thinner, our paint thinner. Come into that thinner. This makes it really wet and really easy to transfer from the little tiny liner brush to our dryish canvas, right? The canvas has already started to dry. As soon as we start to put the paint on it, it wants to get dry already, right? Little teeny tiny thing. Come in, start throwing off little bits, little branches, right? Don't know how this tree got to be so tall with this limited amount of water that it receives. It must have roots way down into the, the canyon cave below. Little things, little bits, little things here and there. You can always watch this. You can make your branch a little bit bigger, piece everything together, start to drag it off in different directions. And that's why you want to have that paint thinner though, because it starts to fall, it comes off of your brush, and then you have to push harder and harder and harder to make your tree branches appear, right? And that's not what you want. You want nice, thin, little teeny tiny tree branches that just extend, grow, and you're like, hey, what's happening? Little things. Even little ones that you might not even see. Right? You're not going to see it from so far away. Oh, dead straight across the sun. I love that. And that's what I like right there. Make it a little thicker, a little darker on the way down. Just a couple more branches, though, because we don't want to go too crazy. Right? So we wiggle it. We just got to wiggle, almost like when we do lightning. We just wiggle it. it. Goes wherever it wants. Maybe this guy went down here. He's trying to get closer to the water down there. It's like, please. I'm thirsty. Please feed me. I need water. Very cool. Just like that. Maybe one more up here. Just a little guy. If you can see him, you can see him. I don't want to ever have too many branches because then it gets too crazily full and nobody likes that. All right, let's get a little bit of our liquid white just so we can thin the paint down a little bit with that yellow. I like this color so much. We just use it for the, the tree trunk as well. Just changes it up, adds a little bit of that brown onto one side so we can have, you know, with the sun directly behind it, it's kind of hard to show where to shadow it, where you would see it. You may see all of the highlights. You may see none of the shadow or vice versa. It could just be a silhouette. So I like to add just a little bit, a little bit of color. That's all we need. Blend it in. Got a cool little tree right there, dead center. Fantastic. Fantastic little thing. So again, if this is your first time watching Paint with Josh. Tell us where you're watching from, who you're watching with, what time it is, where you are. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. We love responding to people. So respond to us and we'll write back to you. Little bit liquid white and our sap green and kind of brownish mixture. And who knows, maybe we'll go this way. Just kind of covering one half, right? It doesn't have to be all bright or all crazy and even as we get down to the bottom you're never going to see every single thing right so you don't have to try to paint every single highlight it's not going to make a difference you have to have some sort of darkness in your tree in order for it to look real according to paint with josh and that's the only opinion that matters to me paint with josh's opinion that's very cool all right let's take um Let's take this guy, a little teeny, 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 teeny bit of paint thinner, just so it'll come off my brush easier. And maybe over here we had like a little, a little squiggly guy. Cool little squiggly little tree over here. Just very small, very thin little branches. And then we can come back with our, our liner brush. And really get after it. There we go. Cool little thing with a ton of little branches, right? So go back to that same liner we we're just using. Back into the same color, that same darkness. Get it nice and rough. It wants to run off my palette. It's so wet. It wants to run off the palette. Come over here. Every time we had a little break in our 
thing. That's a chance for another little branch to come out, in my opinion. Come up to the tip top. Just pull away. Pull away as you get to the top. You get those sharp little edges. Right? The more you push, the harder, you know, the, the fatter your branch is going to be. You get cool little details, all sorts of little things. Just very quickly and very easily. Fantastically done. Bam. And the more paint thinner you have on the brush, the, the easier it's going to be for these things to, to grow. If you're pulling a lot of that thick, heavy oil paint around, it's going to be harder for them to come off of the brush easier. So get it nice and wet with the thinner or your liquid clear or linseed oil, whatever you have. Nice and wet on there. That's what you want is this nice, wet, gross, slop pile of paint that's going to very easily come off of our brush and onto our camera too, without having to push too hard. Bring our little guy down in there and we'll pop him up. Maybe he's up over here, over there. He's got branches all over the place, this guy. I love these little cactus plants. It's like, how can you, how do you have, I meant to say plants instead of cactus. How do you have, um, so many little limbs when there's such a little amount of water to drink. It's like, how, does the, how do these little branches grow out so far with barely any water feeding them? I've always found it interesting. But again, it's like it's to, you know, life will try to grab onto any hole that can, any which way, anywhere. And this guy's all going to be silhouette, by the way. I'm not going not gonna to highlight all these guys again. Very quick, soft, little tiny swipes, right? They don't have to be gigantic things. Little tiny swipes. Softer the swipe and the more paint thinner, the sharper little branches you get. Come up there, ooh, into the clouds even. Yeah. Ooh, just make it all sorts of crazy. Now, right down here where it comes into its dark area, we really can't tell. That's where I would highlight it with a little bit of like light from the sun. Just so you can see, you know what I mean? The down here in the base, it's got a little bit of brown in itself, right? And then at the very top, we really wouldn't be able to see all of that kind of brownish yellow. So maybe just at the base of some of these tree branches, just to give them a little bit. And then it's like it got so small that you just couldn't even see it any more color. A bit of brown in there, bam, bam, bam. Just like that. Where again, we're it's sun is setting. We're in a shadowy, crazy little cave. Back where our canyon waterfall lives. Really cool. Really cool. Man, we could have this come down into here. Even have the water come down and fall off of that. And that would be fantastic. Be fantasmic. I had to have one more little, one more little branch in there. It's all I needed. Littlest bit. Just for my own brain. All right. Again, yours will be totally different than this, and that's totally fine. It does not have to look the same at all. We have said it, and I'll say it a million times. You don't have to look exactly like this by the time you get done. Just giving you a little idea. Another little way to go, like Paint with Josh does for free. Better than all the other guys, right? There we go. All the other guys and gals. Anybody else doing it? Bam! All right. Look at the difference from the brown over here to the yellow. It's almost like the light striking it differently, right? You have all these differences in color. This guy's like a little, little cliff out there. Very cool. All right, now let's get started. Let's get started. What do you mean, let's get started, Josh? You haven't gotten started yet? No. All right, let's take our, our waterfall directly down underneath where we think it would have popped out. We'll just put it right there. Very cool. Just like that. And then in here, we want to have all this little bit of fog, right? 
wherever that waterfall landed, it had a lot of fog with it as well. Coming down just like that, making it soft is all. All we gotta do, we should have done it up here too. Pull down on the water just to make it soft. Now when we come in here, we wanna push hard. Right, fill up our the back of our little canyon cave with that little bit of mist. Look at that, as the water's coming down, where does it hit? Where does it finish? Where does it go down to? Where's the bottom, right? Could be way down here and all this mist, you can't really see the bottom of the thing. Very, very cool. Really like that. Let's just kind of cut it off. There we go, from the top. Again, very soft. Because it's very far away and we have to make it look like a very soft version of what's going to come in front of it. Can't have it be different than that. There we go. Alright, now it looks like to me there'd be a little bit of a like a little river, some sort of something, something in this mess back here. All this rock, we could come down with all this rock and have a little river start to pop its way out. Oh, guys, that's going to be cool. Check this out. We may have to get down on our knees and paint this, the bottom of this canvas. I've never seen Josh do it, but he may have to get down there and do it. All right, let's see. Oh, my old knees. Can you guys still see me on camera? All right, maybe you know how I like my... My paintings to be up here. Let's see if we went with the water. No, we could do a whole nother piece in front of here connected to this rock, but I love the, the inside of the cave. So what are we going to do? Let's say our, our water came down and it hit about right there, right? Where is it going to move and where is it going to fall if it were going to do that? We could have it fall out over here. Let's do a little river as we go out to the side just by leaving little areas, just like we do with our oceans, right? Don't cover the whole thing. The water's got to dip and drop and have all sorts of little differences in it. And then maybe, I don't know, it came out over there into another little bit of pond that we had going over here. And we can figure that part out. Then we might be able to cover over this piece Yes, that's what we're going to do. So, let's feed the water into its next little pond, right? Not covering everything. That's fantastic. We're going to have the rock come down, cover over the top of that. We go back there, be very soft. And then maybe as it got down to about that level, we wouldn't even know why. We'll put some rocks in there, but let's throw, let's get more white paint. And this is what it must be like sitting down and painting. I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> Let's come over here, take it like that, right at the edge, straight off, right? Flip it over. Try to be as straight as you can, Josh. Crazy. Try to be as straight as you can. And don't do too many swipes because we'll cover up too much of that darkness. You don't want to cover up all the dark. Definitely don't want to cover up all the dark. A little bit of sideways pull as we go down. Flip over. Let that sucker just go down to the depths. Very cool. All right, not as far on the sides though. Yeah, I like that. I like that, guys. There we go. Now we can come in with our rocks and decide all sorts of stuff. So let's take our two-inch brush. Really flatten this guy down. We want him to be very soft. Kind of straight down as water can fall, right? Bam! Very cool little waterfall off the bottom of this guy. Inside the depths of the cave. All right, now if we're gonna make this back into that rocky section that's gonna come down here, let's get some more of that brown and black and crimson and blue and all the dark colors. All right, save all the light colors for the highlights and stuff. And then maybe we have the whole little piece come in across the waterfall, right? It's a new little section of rock. It's then going to be part of our foreground over here. As just like this thing, there's another little piece. 
And that way we know where our water's coming from, why it's disconnected, and then why we can have our rock down here. Come out, just covering little bits of the waterfall. And then we'll just cover whatever we don't want to use back there. That'll be that front. Now let's decide what's going to go on back underneath there. We'll have some rocks in the back, so we'll take a little bit more of that dark. And again, it's just so we have a little bit of paint back here, right? A little bit of rock underneath wherever that guy was as he leads down to our, our little place where our canyon waterfall is. Right? Obviously, all these rocks are connected into one giant piece. And we'll come over there. Maybe we'll have a little pool. Maybe it'll waterfall off that side, too. And we'll fill all the rest in with rock. But first, we have to, we have to put the water back there before we cover over where our water's going to go. So let's finish this edge. Grab this side. We got all that blue and everything. You can come in as far as you want on your ledge, right? I like finishing off the edge of the the waterfall. And that way, it doesn't look un it doesn't look weird to me. Right? How did that thing look? It's kind of like this, and then trailed off. Maybe came back in here. And then we can make it decide on what we want. I don't want to cover off the bottom of the waterfall either. I like that it falls off and then we can't see it. I, I covered that on the other one. And I was like, man, I wish I could have left that piece open. All that'll be cave wall and shadows and all sorts of stuff. And we're just about done. Let's get a little bit more white, decide what our water is going to look like over here. We're going to have to get back down on our knees here. And let's decide, maybe our water hit right there. And then maybe he fell off a different way, right? But leaving those little little bits under there. Come underneath, leave that darkness under there. You have to have that dark color under our waterfall. It gives it more depth, right? This guy came in. Then we can go cover whatever we don't want. Maybe had a little bit of a splash at the top and then came down again and we'll splash at the bottom. Again, leaving that darkness though, you don't want to have too much of it be covered. It's like the forbidden pool. Oh, oh man. Right, maybe it came over here. Maybe it fed back or did something. But it gets darker and darker back here because there's not a lot of light feeding back this far. Right? Very cool. Very cool little thing. I mean, come in and add little rocks and fill in different little places. Now let's have it drop off one more time down to the depths. Davy Jones Laka. Do we put any blue down here? Let's just, just quickly, I can't remember if I did or not, and I want it to be very bright blue, so let's just put some blue down in here. Add a little bit of the darkness of that blue back into those areas, and then real dark blue down in here. And that way we'll have all that beautiful undercolor when we go off with our white. Fantastic. Just like this over here. And we'll maybe have the rocks come in, so maybe this guy falls this way. And then we'll have it fix whatever we don't like, right? Again, not all the way down. Doesn't have to go, you know, any which where. Just has to kind of make sense. Off to the side. I like it. I like it. The more we push, it's going to blend in with that bluey color that we just put underneath. Man, that's turning out to be cool. Very, very cool. Even on this front guy down here, we can even take a little bit of the actual white water and he'll be the closest waterfall to us. So his should have just a little bit of that real water feel, don't you think? Don't you guys think? little waves here and there, little differences, little things, little rocks, little humps, little bumps. Little humps and bumps and slumps. Right, maybe we had one more little bit where it's just like the water's like, man, I can't just go this straight for this long. Why don't we just hop down here as well? Another little piece of waterfall and then we'll cover the edges with rocks. Just like that, get another little double waterfall. Try to make him just a bit wider. There we go. 
Again, this guy very lightly, just so he's got a little bit of texture in him. Not so much. Very light little things. And then we are, don't want anything to happen right here. That's where we'll put that. Got to have just a little bit more paint though right here. It just doesn't want a waterfall for me. It's like, nah, we've had enough falling for the day. I started way up here. Now you want me to fall again? Get out of here. There we go. Very soft little things. Come up from the bottom that time. Bottom, top. Very soft, far away little thing. Very cool. Let's add a little bit of mist just around the edges of the waterfall just by doing that. Just little things. Always have a little bit of air particle, particulates, some sort of something in the air around where we're, where the water is falling. So just very softly is all I'm doing like that. Take our little bit right here. Yeah, it can fall off like that. A couple little bits of waves and different things. Little differences in color is all we're looking for, right? That's all we need. This guy is just being a pain in my butt right now. So we'll scrape off all of that paint and come back, wash off the brush. Back into our white. Maybe get a little bit of liquid white this time. Just the smallest little bit. And we're going to come up to the edge. Don't have enough for it to stick, that's why. And come up to the edge and just go over just slightly, pulling to the side, falling down. There we go. Get that little effect. It's more and more and more and more and more waterfalls happening at this little place. Very cool. All right, now we're going to finish in the edges. So that way it doesn't look too weird, right? If we have a little bit of rock come in here, we'll cover over that spot, right around the edge of the waterfall over there, or come in and cut off that whole section of water back in here, just by doing that. Filling it all in with that color, and poof, we got a wicked little waterfall scene coming together. That is neat. Let's take some more of that dark and black and blue and brown and come back and really fine tune the edges of this little guy so he can come back in and just pop right in there. Perfection. All right. Now we have this whole huge giant piece of rock that we're going to be able to fix and play with, leaving all these little differences and different things happening. All right, but first, Gotta make it sort of soft. Make it sort of soft, otherwise it's gonna be too sloppy to work with. And if it's too sloppy, it's gonna be hard to do. All right, a little bit of, all we have left to do now is finish the rocks and then we'll be done. So let's get a little bit of brown, maybe both those yellows, both the browns, I'll just mix it all up into here. Bam, 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 because we're gonna need a lot. Let's not over mix it. And poof, we have this very deep, dark under color of our, maybe down underneath here. We started to, to get lit up from all these little different things that it starts to see down in there. The light hits in a certain spot, lights up just the edge, you pull it off and get these cool little things. And just by mixing it and, and playing around, you get these neat little bits where the the rock would lay on itself and swipe and pull all these cool little things very simply and what easily done that's what i always like to say there we go don't want to cover everything of course i right? don't want to cover up all of our blue back there either i love that blue reflection we might even need to do some more of that just make this kind of white with our blue Right in there. Almost done, guys, I swear. Almost donezies. Okay, we're going to take this. And again, anywhere where there... Ooh, that's very bright. Let's add some darkness to that. Add it to black to dull it down. 
right? Just like that. Got to dull it down so, there we go, so it's not so super bright. That's going to be some of the shadowy reflections of our, uh, not the reflections, the shadows. Shadowy shadows of our rocks that are real deep in there that we can't get to. And again, a lot of times, the more and more we go over it, the more it's going to change and mix and blend. So don't worry. Here's is going to be a little bit different. It's all going to be fine. Okay, very softly pulling this guy so he doesn't all disappear. Man, that's cool. That is cool. Maybe there's a little bit more light up here. We can kind of feed some of these guys in together to make it make a little bit more sense. Maybe have it make a little bit more sense why and how we're transitioning into our cave back here. Very cool. Very cool indeed. A little bit more crimson to seal the deal. There we go. And of course, after every layer, got to come back, make it soft. Just three hairs and some air. That's all you need. And remember what I said about areas where it's just too much brightness in one spot? Just throw a little bit of imperfection in there. That's all you need. Poof. And this is turning out to be one of my all-time favorites, that's for sure. Okay, same color, back to that yellowish, brownish filth that we made. All right, we're going to start to highlight this guy. But just on his one side that might be able to see the sun, right? He's not going to see the sun everywhere. Just on the one edge, and then maybe down around the bottom, it's going to get so dang dark and hard to see that we just go so, so, so lightly, kind of feeding that color back. The more and more we mix in, the more it's going to change and blend with the darker color that's underneath and look more realistic, like a rock. Feed the underside of that guy back. Very cool. There we go. Again, you just mix it up. Just mixing it into different little things. We might have had a little light just from both sides. When In that case, I'm going to leave the center the most dark. All right, if we just had a little bit of light coming in, and it could only reach most things, then the center of everything would be dark, in my eyes anyway. Get this guy over here. Again, very dark. Maybe have some more black on him. He's like too bright purpley. I'm just throwing in some of that dark black mixture, the brown, the dark sienna brown, the blue, the thalo, all of it together. Make him soft like we always do. Try to make him soft. That way he'll stick. All the, the highlights will stick a little bit better to him. Go like this. Pull it down. Come over here. A little bit over there. Again, leaving the the side where the light might hit a little bit bright, and then as we work our way back, less and less and less and less. Less and less and less, and then we blend it so softly with those same angles, and just a couple little hairs. A very cool little painting. I like that. That is neat. Let's take our brush and we'll sign it. Not that brush, though. I don't like that brush. I don't like that brush. Let's we'll sign it here. We need to throw the family in too. Why don't we do that first? Take the. Now, if you guys don't know, and again, this is your first time watching, thank you for watching such a long video, firstly. And uh, the birds that we're about to put in have a very special meaning to me. They, I didn't come up with the birds, I didn't come up with the shape. They're not, you know, original to me, but they are very touching to me. They're, they represent myself, my wife, and my daughter. And they go into every single painting that we do as part of the signature. So let's pick a spot for them, maybe over here. All right, and all it is is a couple birds that fly through our scene. That's really the only way my wife and daughter and I get to travel all together is flying through these paintings with you guys. So I always encourage that you do something similar. And um, you know, if you've got five people, put five birds in there. If you've only got one or two or, or seven or 17, you have a whole flock of birds. But I always encourage people to do that. It's, it's, uh, it's a cool touching thing. And I like that people know that I'm the one that came up with it. 
So, let's see. Again, very dark down in the corner. Down here, it doesn't even have any paint on it. Never even got painted. Just like that. I don't think I've ever had to do so many squats getting up and down while painting a painting. Well guys, I really, I wish there was more people in the room besides just me and you because this one came out fantastic and I want to show it. So uh, I'm going to be posting this one to my page. It's going to be available for sale in the Etsy shop. Um, you know, I recommend getting it quickly if you want to get it because there is more than just one person watching at a time and a lot of times people want to nab it up quickly. So. Uh, as soon as I put it in there, some of the times it takes two minutes and it's gone. And that means people are just sitting there refreshing, refresh, refresh, refresh. But fantastic, little 24 by 36. Gonna have to fix the top while we have it out. Look at the size of this beauty. My goodness, what are we doing? What are we doing? Just gonna fix the top, adding a little bit of the, the crimsony pinky color that we had to match everything else, right? Crimson and black always give this very beautiful sky color to me. And I always like the tops of the canvases to be dark, you know, especially as the sky kind of levels out like that. That's how it is in nature when I see it. So that's how I want to see it when I'm painting it. And just getting a nice kind of darkish gray around the edge just to match the sky itself very cool very cool all right very 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 neat again you can always just take the just the little top section and go over your edges or not man that's a cool one guys so Again, this one's going to be available for sale on Etsy. You can uh, go to Etsy, uh, sorry, paintwithjosh.etsy.com and get this gorgeous beauty, a uh, two foot, so 24 inches by 36 inches, three feet, two foot by three foot, fantastic little desert, kind of mountainous gorge waterfall scene. So again, it'll be available on Etsy right after the show ends. And I want to thank you guys for tuning in on Labor Day for hanging out with me while we did this wicked cool scene. I'm glad you were here to see it come together, and uh, you know I always love when you guys do your versions. So please try this painting, send it in. You can do it on a much smaller canvas. You don't have to go so crazy like me, right? But I'd, I always love seeing when you guys send them in, and we have such a fun time watching them and and looking at them. And then I save them all for big fan appreciation posts. So send them in. Paint with Josh. Uh, sorry, Facebook.com/slash/PaintWithJosh. Buy the painting at PaintWithJosh.etsy.com. Go to my YouTube page which is youtube.com slash paintwithjosh, facebook.com slash paintwithjosh, and uh, TikTok and Instagram are the only two that are different. Those are Paint with Josh K. So again, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad you spent the time today hanging out with me and watching this scene come together. And if you want to see more big canvases like this, let me know in the comments. And also, most importantly, support the store. Because when you guys make purchases and buy paintings or buy t-shirts or hats or all this stuff, it helps me buy more canvases. So if you want to see bigger canvases like this, you guys know as well as I know how expensive they are. And, uh, you know, it's much easier to get a little, little canvas. That's why we normally paint on the 16 because you can get them in the five packs. But if you guys want to see bigger, crazier paintings on crazy holiday days where Josh normally isn't even painting, See how it's Labor Day for you guys? You guys are all off of work and I have to work. I work for you. I work for your brain and your inspiration to go and paint, right? Painting is the most fun, most relaxing thing I think I've ever done. Maybe not the most fun thing I've ever done, but the most relaxing thing I've ever done for sure, especially when you get good at it, right? And I know it's hard. You're like, man, you're so good. I'll never get that good, right? When I first started, I wasn't that good. I had a little bit of talent, but I wasn't that good. I wasn't as good as I am now, that's for sure. And don't even think that the painting that comes after this one is going to be better, right? Because a lot of times, sometimes you, I, me especially, I'll take a jump backwards. And I go, man, I painted like two great paintings, and then all of a sudden I throw a dud out. And I'm like, what happened? Why did this all of a sudden not, not work, right? It's because not every painting is going to be better than your last one. And I always try to tell that to the beginners, you know, because you can get discouraged. You do an awesome one, and then all of a sudden, it's like you forgot how to paint. And you're like, what, what did I do wrong? 
what, why did this one turn out like this and not like these other ones, you know, before? And again, it's because, just because it's the, it becomes after doesn't mean that it's going to be better than what you did in the past. I've done some really awesome ones early on in my, my painting journey. And then I've done ones that are really awesome now, and I've done ones that are really terrible recently. You know what I mean? I mean, not, not terrible, but not as good as, as quality as we normally put out. So it all depends. But every one of my paintings to me is fantastically irreplaceable and valuable. So they're all for sale on my Etsy store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Follow me on YouTube, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everything. TikTok, I'm all over everywhere. I'm here, I'm there, I'm Paint with Josh, I'm everywhere, right? Throw your brushes in the air and paint it harder like you just don't care. Don't stop, y'all. I paint a rock, y'all. Come on, y'all. Man, it's going to be fun when we do that song, you guys. It's going to be fun. All right, let's clean these off because I know if I just kill the camera right now, I'm not going to be able to, feel like, I'll get distracted and then I'll have to clean it and I'll have rock hard brushes and nobody wants that. Then I won't be able to paint if I have rock hard brushes. There we go. No matter how many times I beat the devil out of it, it never quite gets 100% dry. There we go. And that's why we paper towel it to death. Especially when I'm finishing up for the day. I don't want my, oh, we never used this guy, I'm glad. There would have been some gigantic clouds if we had used this guy. Woo! Man, this one's fire. I love it, I love it. 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 Take a little bit of glitter. Just the littlest touch. Just up in the sky. Wherever it lands, it lands. A little sparkle. Awesome sauce. Okay, well guys, I want to thank you for tuning in and uh, cleaning all my brushes with me and hanging out and painting this painting. Can't wait to see your version. Remember, shop the store. Get your hats. Get your shirts. Get all your merchandise, buy all the paintings. I have all these prints that you can get for much, 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 much less than the uh, original paintings. I'm running a 50% off sale right now uh, for the next couple days. Uh, it'll be paintwithjosh.etsy.com. All the paintings will be half off and the prints I think are about 20% off right now. So go to paintwithjosh.etsy.com, support us on all the stores, on all the channels, like, share, love, comment, copy the link, post it to your page and also post it into the groups. Post it into every art group that you're in. Every single group. Bam, 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 bam. We could flood the internet with Paint With Josh, right? If you just post it to your page, cool. A lot of the, all your friends will see it. But if you post it into the art room, you get thousands and thousands and thousands of people that are going to be looking at it. And it's going to be coming from a different place than from my page. It'll be coming from your page. So go into all the art groups. Post this one. Turned out fantastic. And until I see you guys again next time, either Friday nights for Friday Night Freestyle, Sunday mornings for Sunday Seascapes, or Wednesdays when we normally put videos out, and sometimes crazy Monday holidays like today and when we did the, uh, the Memorial Day one. That was on a Monday. It was fantastic. So uh, until we see you guys again next time, you guys take care. Have the rest of a good day. And pow, get up out of here. You're done. Who am I talking to? I'm talking to myself. i got to hit my own cameras. Get them out of here, babe. They are done. <laughs>